Good morning. It's Sunday, May 29th. Quentin Palfrey, candidate for Massachusetts Attorney General, is our guest. Let's go on the record. A former assistant attorney general, he is now wants the state's top law enforcement job. Will a previous run for statewide office give him an edge in a hotly contested race? The candidate is here to make his case. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR. I'm Janet Wu along with News Center 5 political reporter Sharman Sacchetti. Ed is off this Memorial Day weekend. Hope you are having a nice long weekend too. We're pleased to have Quentin Palfrey with us this morning. He is a Democrat, formerly acting general counsel at the U.S. Council, uh, Commerce Department under President Biden. He was a senior advisor in the Obama administration in the Office of Science and Technology Policy, a candidate for lieutenant governor in 2018. He holds degrees from Harvard and Harvard Law. Thank you for joining us on this holiday weekend. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Sadly, let's begin with what's going on in Texas. America is grieving yet again with another mass shooting at a school, this time involving young children. Uh, Massachusetts is among the states with the strongest gun laws. Now there is talk about banning the manufacture of assault weapons and ghost guns here. Do you have any other ideas on what ought to be done? Absolutely. So as, as the father of three children, a 13-year-old, a 10-year-old, and a 5-year-old, it's just devastating to see yet another school shooting. I dropped my children off at school, and now we see cops in front of the, uh, the school. So it really hits us at a personal level. And I think we ask ourselves again and again, why won't someone do something? And I think some of that is the NRA's influence in Washington. Um, and it really underscores the importance of state leadership. As you mentioned, um, Massachusetts has some of the best gun laws in the country, and we have some of the best uh, outcomes as well. Um, the AG has had a really strong tradition of being a leader in fighting um, to protect us from gun violence. But there's a lot more that we can do. Uh, one of those things the AG has been fighting for for a long time is the liability shield, uh, making sure that gun manufacturers are accountable when people are harmed as a result of their uh, bad conduct. Another, as you mentioned, is uh, 3D guns, ghost, uh, ghost guns. When I was in the Commerce Department under President Biden, uh, I worked on a number of those issues. It's a really slippery kinds of, kind of thing because uh, it is so easy to disseminate the cookbook for creating uh, these 3D printed guns. We also need to be really worried about guns coming across the border into Ma Massachusetts. We need to be worried about armories and we need to be worried about mental health, the mental health crisis and suicide in our, um, you know, that's the, the number one cause of gun violence is actually self-inflicted gun violence. Should, so we have a lot of work to do. Should these guns continue to be manufactured here in Massachusetts? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If something is unlawful uh, in Massachusetts, we shouldn't be producing it right here. Look, Massachusetts has been a leader for so long on so many issues. The Constitution was born here. We were at the heart of the abolitionist movement. We led the way on equal marriage and universal access to care. And I think in this moment, when Washington is broken, when there's so many failures, we need Massachusetts to lead and the AG to lead on so many of these big challenges. Gun violence is one of them, but we see reproductive rights under attack in a radicalized Supreme Court. We see LGBTQ rights under attack. We have a climate crisis that Congress fails over and over again to take on seriously. Our democracy is literally under attack. An armed mob stormed the Capitol to disrupt the peaceful transition of power. I think if we ask ourselves, where is the leadership going to come from to tackle these big issues, it's going to come from the states and Massachusetts needs to lead the AG is a big part of that. Let's talk a little bit about your campaign. You ran for public office four years ago hoping to be elected lieutenant governor as Jay Gonzalez's running mate. Now you're running for attorney general. How do you convince voters, especially Democrats, that you're not simply shopping for a statewide office? So as a former assistant attorney general, I've seen firsthand how much impact the AG can have on people's lives all across Massachusetts. I was the first chief of the health care division in the AG office at the time that we were implementing Massachusetts health reform. I worked in the White House under President uh, uh, Obama. And on day one of the Biden-Harris administration, I led a team of several hundred lawyers. Um, I was responsible for all of the mess that Trump left 
left us with the census, for example. Um, and so I believe that my experience as a lawyer in the Attorney General's office and in the federal government puts me in a unique situation in this race uh, to step in on day one. We need an AG on day one who has the skills and the experience to lead this office in this critical time. I won't need on-the-job training because I've done it myself. Um, a lot of people starting in elective office start with lower tier offices to run. Any interest in doing that first to sort of prove to the Democrats that you know you understand their base and you want to move up through the ranks? I've had the great honor to serve in the White House under President Obama. I've served in senior levels in both the federal and the state government. And I was the 2018 Democratic nominee for lieutenant governor. I do believe that I'm well positioned to lead as the next people's lawyer. Um, and I would love uh, for voters to consider me for that role. You did lose to Republican Governor Charlie Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito back in 2018. Now, he was leaving office with the highest approval ratings of any governor in the country. Do you think he's done a good job and do you think your team could have done better? I think that we've had a real failure to take on the really big challenges of our time. Racial injustice, the climate crisis, attacks on our democracy, attacks on workers' rights and reproductive rights and LGBTQ rights, gun violence and housing costs. My biggest critique of the Baker administration is they've failed to meet the moment. One of the things that we've seen from Massachusetts um, is the kind of leadership that we need in this critical time. We have never seen that leadership out of the Baker administration. And yes, I think we need bolder leadership, um, and I'm excited to be able to partner with the Democratic governor to have a bold progressive agenda. So you don't think he's done a good job? I would say that there have been a lot of failures to, uh, to take on these issues urgently. I also think that there's been too much coziness with the National Republican Party. He raised money uh, alongside Jim Lyons. He, he endorsed Jeff Deal. Uh, he endorsed Susan Collins, whose vote allowed Kavanaugh to come on the Supreme Court, uh, which has led to this devastating attack on our civil rights. So yes, I think that we would have been better off with Democratic leadership, and I'm excited for that leadership this year. And you don't think the pandemic sort of uh, helped detract him from quote meeting the moment as you would as you phrased no, it. No, I don't think that he met the moment in the opioid in, in the in the pandemic. I think the opioid crisis and the pandemic have laid bare the shortcomings in our healthcare system, the re, the racial disparities, the failure to invest in prevention, the failure to deal with chronic disease management. I'm a big fan of single payer health care um, because I was the first chief of the healthcare division in the AG office. I founded that division at the time that we were implementing Massachusetts health reform. We worked really hard to make sure that everyone had access to high quality, affordable health care. I sued some big insurance companies that were lying to Massachusetts consumers and kicked them out of Massachusetts. That kind of leadership was lacking from the Baker administration during the pandemic. Um, we were, we were going to need to lead on the issues that really... I want to get to an issue that I know you're eager to talk about. You've gotten lots of attention for criticizing one of your opponents, Andrea Campbell, who has a super PAC, which obviously she has no control over whatsoever, but the Environmental League already is spending money on her behalf. What's wrong with environmentalists supporting or backing um, Andrea Campbell. So we need to get outside money out of our politics. But the real issue here is that there is an independent expenditure committee, a super PAC that describes itself as being in support of Andrea Campbell, um, that has in the last year received $1.6 million from people like Jim Walton, from the, exec the managing director of They Bain spent Capital. money in his ma her mayoral campaign, but not ha have not indicated they're spending money in this campaign. But I think the really important thing for us to know is that the attorney general needs to have a duty of loyalty to to the people of Massachusetts. And having received that level of support from Jim Walton, Bain Capital, from Reed Hastings, is really going to constrain her ability um, to take on those big companies. So for instance, when I was in the AG office, we sued Walmart. If a similar case came up right now, and Jim Walton recently gave a very large donation to a super PAC in support of Andrea Campbell, I do believe that the uh, attorneys in the office would view that as the appearance of a conflict of interest and would prevent her but from being in that's no, I think I, that's also what, that that's also what the, the former first assistant attorney general of the office, what Larry Lessig, a scholar at uh, at Harvard, um, what American Promise, when those issues were analyzed. But look, the attorney general needs to be free of those kinds of conflicts. Needs to be able to take on Bain Capital, tech companies like Netflix, uh, companies like Walmart, and those recent large contributions to a super PAC that describes itself as being in support of Andrea Campbell um, creates the 
a problem with her acting as the people's lawyer. But as I said before, there's no indication they're spending money in this campaign yet. But we will uh, continue our conversation with Clinton Palfrey after this break.